Hello friends, let me begin by thanking the organizers of uh, Think India for inviting me to speak today at this very important conclave on the cultural economy. Now, uh, India is of course a very ancient civilization going back five, six thousand years. So we are all very proud of our uh, civilization, of our culture. Uh, and very often we tend to think of it somewhat uh, unconnected to our economy. Uh, of course, it's important in its own right, uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's important because it defines who we are, uh, it, it provides us an identity, uh, it, uh, it brings us immense joy in its own right. However, the cultural space is also an important part of our economy, something that we are not very often um, used to thinking of it. But there are large parts of the economy that are actually driven by um, culture in multiple ways. So let's take one example, tourism. Um, tourism, particularly that within India, is driven heavily by uh, cultural uh, artifacts, whether it's visiting an archaeological site uh, and of course pilgrimage. Uh, not many people realize that the single biggest uh, source of internal tourism, even today, is actually people visiting pilgrimage sites. Then and there are, of course, uh, all the variety of archaeological sites across the country. There are ancient forts, palaces, temples, uh, and so on, uh, that uh, you know, um, uh, are an important fo uh, fo uh, form of uh, um, sort of uh, uh, drivers of uh, tourism, which is, of course, as you know, a very major sector because it feeds food to all kinds of things, from hotels to uh, transportation, tour guides and all kinds of other things. There's of course the inflow of foreign tourists as well who come to India to see major sites like Hampi or uh, the forts of Rajasthan or the Taj Mahal and so on. So there is a huge amount of income that is generated by uh, traveling to see places of, uh, of cultural importance. Then there is another form of cultural economy which is not related to uh, places or buildings but related to, for example, music or literature or uh, theater and movies. Of course, India has the largest uh, 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 movie uh, making uh, sector in the world. Um, and we are all very proud of the achievements of our cine cinematic uh, 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 representations of uh, uh, stories, of course, ancient stories as well, but modern ones. And uh, of course, the Bollywood and Tollywood and uh, all the other uh, hubs of this uh, of this sector. Now, in addition to this, there are other segments of our culture that are even less thought of as a part of our economy. But in fact, they are important parts. But let's take cuisine for example. Uh, food is an important uh, part of everyday life, of course. But food is also a part of our culture. And it's also consequently a part of our uh, cultural economy, whether it's restaurants or various kinds of uh, foods that we are taking around the country. Then there are textiles and uh, handicrafts and, uh, uh, and so on. So these are all part of our culture. These are all important parts of who we are, but they're also important as uh, drivers of uh, economic activity. Now, one important thing I'd like to state in, at this juncture that very often when we think of culture, there is a tendency to think of it as some fossilized thing from the past, which we need to be proud of because our ancestors did it or something like that. Um, and maybe even people who accept that this is part of an economic activity, even they will very often think of it as something from the past. It's not something living, that's something we, we carry around. Maybe we can make some economic value out of it, but it's something from the past and uh, fossilized. This is not true. We are a living civilization, which means that we are continuously adding to this pool uh, of uh, cultural activity. And just like with any other economic activity, uh, it is important that we invest into it. Uh, just like we invest into factories, just like we invest into infrastructure, we also need to invest into our cultural economy. So this requires many things. And I'm pleased to say that in recent years, we have taken a conscious effort to do this. For example, uh, the entire Kashi Vishwanath corridor. This is an example of a new investment uh, into a, 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 an old precinct, 
which has been now redeveloped. It now allows for a much larger number of devotees to visit this place. There are a large number of uh, other arch uh, archaeological sites that have been redeveloped newly. Uh, if you are from Delhi, you'll be very familiar with uh, the, the opening up and redevelopment of, for example, Sundar Nursery. Uh, it's an important part of the, uh, uh, of the uh, landscape of uh, Delhi these days. Um, then there is, of course, the very huge project that is happening in Ayodhya with the rebuilding of the uh, uh, Ram Temple. Uh, this is, um, you know, going to transform the economy of uh, Ayodhya and that uh, general area. Um, not just for the temple itself, but all the other multiplier effects that happen from it. The hotels that happen, even the other smaller minor shrines that are getting upgraded. It is now a major tourism site in its own right. So, there again, another example of how investment needs to be done. Then, of course, in the other areas uh, as well, we need investment. We need, uh, for example, uh, new books to be written, new stories to be told, those then to be transformed into cinematic representation. Those cinematic representations will happen in uh, newer and newer platforms. So there is, of course, the old, uh, uh, you know, full screen television. Then there are the OTT uh, platforms that have now grown. And into the future, I can see that these will all move on to some sort of a virtual reality universe as well. Then there is gaming. Uh, that's a new emerging area. So there is a multiplicity of areas where cultural activities and, and economic activities uh, uh, based on them will also expand. Of course, there, is the, there are traditional areas like music, uh, there are traditional areas like cuisine. These two evolve. We too need to begin to keep investing into them. And again, some of this needs fairly mundane things to be done very often. For example, creating venues. And again, you'll see here, a lot of new investment is coming in. For example, in Delhi, two major uh, hubs have been created, a particularly large one that has now been built uh, in uh, Dwarka, but also one <coughs> that has been built in the older site, which is Bharat Mandapam, now, um, which is now brand new. It's an old site, but a brand new facility. And both of them are huge facilities. They, are, they can be, of course, used for trade fairs, but they can be also used for cultural events and large cultural events. Um, so, at every stage, the point I'm trying to make to you is that culture is, of course, an important part of life in its own right. Whether it's our temples or music or cuisine or writings and literature or, um, you know, uh, ancient forts and so on, all of them are also a part of our uh, economy. Two, we need to keep investing into them afresh. These need to be kept afresh. Final thing that I want to bring up is that we need to do this in a much more active way than the passive way in which we do it. And I'm going to talk about uh, one example where uh, you know people may be sometimes squeamish, squeamish about doing this, but we need to see other countries and how they do it uh, in order to be able to leverage these things. Take for example, many of you have been to uh, Europe. And you'll go there and, of course, admire some of these old buildings. I'm sure you go to London also and admire some of the old buildings. It may come as some shock to you to realize that many of these old buildings that you're looking at are actually modern recreations. Because remember, much of Europe, in the course of many wars over the last few couple of centuries, saw mo much of their cultural artifacts actually demolished completely and burnt to the ground. Even London that you see today, remember, was rebuilt after the war because much of London was actually destroyed by uh, aerial bombing by the Germans in the Second World War. Similarly, much, you know, many of the German cities that you now go and see in the old cathedrals and so on, these are completely recons uh, these are con reconstructions that have been made completely in modern times. In fact, in last just in 50, 60 years ago. So when you go and see these things, do realize that they are modern. And yet these countries were willing to rebuild them, to invest into them. Similarly, they are still willing to invest into modern buildings. By the way, we need to build, invest into completely new architecture. So again, something that we do not seem to pay attention to. You know, great cities in India require investing in iconic new buildings. Again, we tend to somehow be squeamish about things. Not only are we squeamish about rebuilding old buildings, if a completely new kind of architecture is brought and experimentation is done, we tend to get very squeamish. 
It happened, for example, when we were refreshing the Central Vista project. There were people who were even going there and defending uh, something like Shastri Bhavan, which is quite obvious that we need to demolish it and build a new building, you know. But somewhere in the back of the mind, we seem to feel guilty about doing these things. It's time to stop. We've got to have a practical view about culture as a part of our daily life, but also as something that is evolving, is something that we mean to continuously invest into, and that if we have been a 6,000 year civilization, do remember whatever we now consider an intrinsic part of our culture was not an intrinsic part of our culture 6,000 years ago. The fact that we have preserved many of these things doesn't mean that new things haven't been added along the way. And our generation too, our time too, will add new things. So while we are proud of our culture as it existed and we want to preserve the best bits of it, we should not be emotionally stressed about adding new things to it because that is how we add to our cultural uh, uh, capital. And so in this context, let me say that we need to build new iconic buildings. We need to uh, create uh, new um, centers and, uh, of attraction. Uh, we need to create new public spaces. We should be willing to create new forms of music, experiment in new kinds of writing, uh, create new kinds of uh, 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 cinematic experience. All of this is what allows Indian civilization to stay alive. We are not a museum and um, uh, we don't intend to be, even if it requires that we need to build a few good museums uh, in order to preserve the best from the past. And in this context, before I end, let me say that while we as a civilization may not be a museum, we do need some really good museums to be built. By the way, worldwide, museums are a major source of economic activity, major attractions, and in this context, we are building the world's largest museum right here in Delhi. We are converting North Block and South Block into an integrated um, uh, uh, art and history museum. Uh, we will be moving out all the North Block, South Block departments and these magnificent buildings will be converted into India's, uh, uh, not just India's, but the world's largest museum. And I look forward to uh, welcoming you in a few years time uh, to these museums. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you got a sense of the kind of thinking we are bringing uh, to culture, uh, not just as, as I said, as an artistic or civilizational artifact, but also as an integral part of our economy. Thank you very much.